Hey everyone, we're down here at the Fire Training Center to walk through the new non-destructive entry kits that we've purchased. We've got one for each of the front line engines, ladders, towers, and the heavy rescue. So we're gonna give you a quick look at each of the tools and how they work. So the tools we've got in the new kits consist of the shove knife. We've got two shrum tools, a two inch and a six inch version. We've got a Williams key. This is a Modus Lloyd tool. We've got a pair of the Zauer tools, an Adams Wright Slim Jim, and then moving down, we've got an original old-fashioned Slim Jim. This is a double door tool for panic hardware on commercial doors. This is our thumb turn tool for thumb turn locks on the front of commercial buildings. We've also included a set of six screwdrivers, three different kinds of wedges. We've got an air wedge, a wood wedge, and a metal force wedge. Then we've also got a doorknob strap to keep the door from closing completely once you've got it open have a trunk key, which is basically a smaller version of the key tool that's on the K tool. We've got a short pry bar, and then we've got two tools for our hotel locks. This is the tool for the privacy door latch that comes from the manufacturer. And then we've got the do not disturb sign for the privacy door latches and the swing bar door guards. All right, so the first tool we have is the shove knife. And a lot of you are probably familiar with that already. We're gonna be using that on outward swinging doors and it's gonna be for locks that have this beveled slam latch on them. And all we're gonna do is take the cutout on the knife and basically use it to walk that bolt back into place so we can open the door. If you've got a really short throw, you may be able to get it in one. Otherwise, you may just have to take a couple bites depending on how big that gap is. just like that. It really doesn't matter if you go from the top or the bottom. For me, it's easier to see what I'm doing if I come from below, but you can certainly do it from the top as well without any difficulty. Uh, the next tools we have are the shrum tools. These are also called traveler's hooks, and these are new to the department. The theory on these is the same as the shove knife. You're gonna be using the tip to get behind that bolt and work it in just like that. The big advantage to these is that they're very thin, and so if you've got a narrow gap in the door, you don't always have a lot of room to move that shove knife, whereas these hooks, all you're gonna do is get it in and pivot and kind of walk it in like that. So these are really nice for a tight gap or something with a long bolt where you're having to do a little bit of work to get it in. And as you can see, you can get a pretty good grab. In this case, I'm able to open it with just one pivot, just like that. So I think we're gonna get a lot of good use out of these. So for outward swinging doors, shove knife, shrum tools are both great if we can get to that bolt that's on the lock. Unfortunately, a lot of times, especially in the commercial areas, we're gonna have a security plate that's over that lock, which prevents us from getting down and into it with the shove knife. So we've got four tools that can help us out with that. The first two are gonna be the Williams key and then the uh, Modus Lloyd tool. And you can see they're basically commercial versions of a T-square tool. And they're a little bit different in their overall size, a little different taper, shorter taper, narrower, longer taper, a little wider. Um, this one's obviously a little bit longer overall as well. But if you need a tool to get in behind that plate, you wanna take the spine of the tool, put it against the inside of the jam, and we're just gonna come straight down and open it up. So this tool is doing the same thing as the shove knife. It's coming down, but it's basically just a question of brute force, wedging in and pushing that bolt into place like that. You may have to bring it down. If it doesn't get it straight in, you may have to bring it down and kind of work it a little bit, pivot it to walk it in. But either way, you should be able to get behind it and hit it. So that's the Modus Lloyd tool. Williams key, a little bit bigger. Same function though, goes through nice and easy. One of the nice things about the length on the Williams key is that if you've got a larger plate and you see those on the back of some commercial buildings, especially outdoor gates like at Lowe's or Home Depot in the garden area, uh, this works really well. Williams key has also got a shove knife on the tip of it in case you just wanna go in and get it like you normally would. All right, the next two tools we have for dealing with the security plate are the Zauer tools and then the Adams Wright Slim Jim. And the Zauer tools come in two different thicknesses. The thin one is really thin, but it's about the only thing that's gonna get into a super narrow gap. The thick one is a little bit easier to use, and we've got a nice gap on this door right here. So we can come down, get it behind the bolt, door opens right up. 
The thin one's just a little bit wobbly for this door, so I probably wouldn't even bother trying it as my first choice. The other tool we have is the Adams Wright Slim Jim, and you can see that it's also got a bevel at the bottom, but it doesn't get nearly as thick as these do up at the top. So if you've got a commercial door that's got a bit of a gap like this one does, it may not be big enough to actually move that lock all the way forward. So for a smaller door with a little bit less play, this may be a great option, but something like this where you've got a pretty good amount of space in there, you're gonna wanna start with one of the bigger tools. All right, let's talk a little bit about backup plans. We always wanna have a couple options in our pocket in case things don't go the way we want them to. And this is especially true in forcible entry where you're dealing with a finesse technique like this. We don't wanna get bogged down trying plan A again and again and again. Uh, tools are small and light. You can grab a couple or you can bring the box and set it on the ground right here outside the door. But if you get in one way and it's just not working, give it a couple tries but don't spend five minutes going that way. You can always try it from another direction. If you don't have any luck there, try another tool. In this case, bam, we're right in. So even though you may have the right tool for the right job in the right situation, it may not end up being the one that plays out perfectly just given the configuration of the door, the lock and the frame and everything else. So if one thing doesn't work, move on and try something else. So one of the problems we might encounter with any of these techniques is going to be what we call a deadlock or a dead latch plunger that's on our bolt here. And this is your typical residential slam bolt. You've probably got them all over your house and you've probably noticed a little plunger on the back. And these are an added safety feature that the manufacturer puts on. Ordinarily, if this pin is extended, we can get in with our tool, shove knife, Lloyd tool, whatever, and manipulate that bolt and let ourselves in. However, if this plunger is depressed, then it locks that bolt into the extended position and none of our tools are gonna to work. Ideally, if this lock is installed properly, when the door closes, it's gonna come up against the strike plate and the main part of that bolt is gonna go into the hole in the strike plate and that dead latch plunger is gonna be depressed and held in place like that. Now, if that's the case, as long as that plunger is depressed, we're not gonna be able to get in and manipulate that bolt the way that we want it to. So we've got a couple options for dealing with that. One thing we need to realize is that the plunger isn't necessarily an all or nothing device. At some point when it's depressed, if you start releasing that plunger, when it gets maybe three quarters of the way out, that bolt can release and it's the same thing going in. If I start pushing that plunger in, it gets maybe two thirds, three quarters in before that bolt locks. So if we don't have it completely depressed, we may be able to move the door in such a way that it's gonna allow that plunger to extend and let us move in with our tools. All right, so if we do find a door that's got a latch with a deadlock plunger on it, if we can look in and see that that plunger is at least partially extended, we may be able to move the door within the frame just enough that it'll allow that plunger to extend all the way and then release the bolt for us to work it. So there are two ways that we can do that. If there feels like there's a little bit of play in the system, it may just be a question of getting another firefighter, have both of you put your weight on the door and lean in until the, uh, plunger pops into the cutout in the strike plate. So you'll have to hold that position, and it may take two of you, get in there and work that latch and let it go. The only thing you have to be aware of is there's gonna be that return tension as soon as you take your weight off. So you wanna find that sweet spot where the latch is still loose enough to work. The other option that we have is to spread the door away from the frame until that plunger extends a little bit more releases, and then we can get in there and manipulate the latch. Now, one of the things we talk about in forcible entry training is this kind of speed damage continuum. If we're in a very big hurry to get in, we're not concerned about the damage. If we're getting in at a little bit slower pace, the less damage we do, the better. And we find all of our entries somewhere along that continuum. So if this building was on fire, we'd get out the irons, no problem, take the door, I'm not gonna worry about it. But if it's just a lift assist or a welfare check, we wanna try to get in and do the least amount of damage we can. So if we're going to spread the door away from the frame, we have a few different options, starting with the least amount of damage. We've got an air wedge, and we can put that in there right next to the bolt, inflate it. This will give us about 300 pounds of spreading force, and it's not gonna leave a mark 
or do any kind of damage to the door. And that may spread it just enough that we can get our tool in there and work that lock. Number two is we've got a small pry bar that's in the kit and we may be able to get in there either above or below whatever the setup is going to allow and give it just a little bit of a tweak and you can see even with the metal door the metal frame I'm moving it just a little bit with a short bar so that may be enough to move it especially if it's a loose door in a kind of a gappy frame and then going kind of towards the we may do a little bit more damage end of the spectrum we've got the two wedges Wooden wedge we can take and we can hammer in either with our halligan or with the axe and that's going to give us some spread. Probably not do too much damage except to the paint. And then our final option, which may definitely leave some scars, is going to be the metal force wedge. And again, we can hammer that in with one of our tools and try to give ourselves a bit of a gap. So our last option, if none of the wedges work, would be to take the halogen and use it to create a little bit more of a gap. However, as you can see, even with a door with a pretty good size gap like this, there's still not enough room to get the ads completely in there. So if we choose to go that route, we're definitely going to do some damage and leave a mark. One of the other tools we have at our disposal is the firefighter swipe tool. It comes in this little tube, pull it out and unroll it. And it essentially works the same way that the shove knife or the shrum tool does. The big difference is that this is going to be used on an inward swinging door instead of an outward. Now the same problems apply if we have a dead latch plunger. However, in this case, there's no way that we can see it because of the configuration of the jam. So it's always worth a shot. We can pull the tool out. We'll put it around the edge of the door between the door and the frame. And then we're going to bring the tool down at a 45 degree angle. Just like that. And the key to this tool is make sure you have that angle in place and bring it down in a slow, steady motion. And all we're going to do is use the edge of the tool to kind of move the bevel of that latch in and open the door. Many of the buildings in our commercial areas have got magnetically locked doors with passive infrared sensors that they use to request to exit. So one of the tools that we have here in our kits is going to be a can of compressed air. And we're going to turn the can upside down, use it to create a fog that will hopefully cause enough of a change in the temperature to trip that sensor and let us in from the outside. And we're in. One of the other new tools we have is the Sparrow's double door tool, which allows us to unlock panic hardware from the outside of the building. The thickest part of this tool is this coated tip. So if it won't fit in that gap, we can take one of our wedge tools and use it to widen that opening. Once we got enough room to put it in, we'll get the tool in between the doors, locate the panic hardware, and then just pull towards us. And we're in. We've also got two tools for some of the secondary or add-on locks that we typically find in hotels and motels. The first one is the swing bar door lock, and then we have the privacy door latch. And we have two tools for those. This is the official tool from the manufacturer for the privacy door latch, and then we've got our unofficial tool that we'll use for both of them. One of the advantages we have in hotels and motels is that we typically have a key or a key card for the door's main lock to get us into the room. However, for the secondary lock, we have to have one of our tools to get past it. First one we're going to look as the swing bar door lock. And for this, we're going to be using our Do Not Disturb sign as a leaf spring to pop that bar right off of the locking post. So the first thing we're going to do is open the door as far as we can, verify that the lock's in place. Slide the Do Not Disturb sign along the bottom bar of that U-shaped swing bar until you make contact with the ball and post that's at the end. And then all we need to do is hold the Do Not Disturb card in place and close the door. You can see how it moves it right off, and we're in. Lock number two is the privacy door latch, and we actually have two tools. This is the tool the manufacturer supplies, and then again, we've got the do not disturb sign. We're gonna show you how to work both of them. For the first run at the privacy door latch, we're gonna be using the manufacturer's tool. So the first thing we do is open the door, make sure that the lock is in play. We're gonna bring the tool around, hook it over the swinging part of the lock, and then as we close the door, we're going to be pulling the tool towards us at the same time at the same speed. And we're in. 
One tip for success if you're using this tool, as it comes from the manufacturer and as we store it, it's flat. And you can see that if you bring it in past the door, there's a good chance you may be missing the critical part of the lock. So with this tool, based on the setup of the door, the depth of the frame, you can go ahead and give it a slight bend, maybe to 45 degrees. And that way when it comes in, it's gonna come down and go over that part of the latch and drag it closed for you. The second tool we have for the privacy door latch is going to be the do not disturb sign. In order to use this technique, we need to have a notch cut into one edge of the sign. The signs that we have in our kits on the rigs will have the notch pre-cut, but if you're using a fresh sign or improvising with a piece of cardboard or flat plastic, you're going to need to cut your own notch into it. And when you do cut the notch, you want to make sure that the flat edge is towards the end of the card that you're going to be using. You also want to make sure that you cut it far enough in from the end that there's still a little bit of structural stability down there. So we'll show you that technique right now. Just as with the manufacturer's tool, the first thing we're going to do is open the door, find the location of the lock. We're going to bring the sign in and again, hook it over the top of the pivoting part of the lock. Because the sign is a little bit lighter, you want to make sure that you maintain a slight downward pressure on the sign to keep it in place. And then as we close the door, we want to pull the sign in towards us at the same rate as the door. Now ideally, as we close the door, the sign will pull the lock all the way closed. However, if it doesn't close all the way, there may be just enough sign here that when the door opens, it's going to ramp it and push it into that open position. One of the other new tools we have is this thumb turn tool, which allows us to unlock thumb turn locks from the outside of the building. As with the double door tool, if you don't quite have enough of a gap to get the tool in, we can use one of our wedge tools. Open it up just a little bit. Once you've got enough room, line up the tool, bring it through, and then we're going to want to set the forks of the tool on the thumb turn knob on the inside of the lock cylinder. And we're in. So that's what's in the kit. We have a couple tools that we didn't touch on. We've got the six piece screwdriver set and that's just there for general disassembly and reassembly of locks or knobs or doors or anything you may come across. We also have the old school Slim Jim. It really doesn't work on vehicles very well anymore, but it does have the same uh, tip shape as a shove knife and it's just a good utility piece for getting into places, reaching latches or things that other tools might not. If you've got a specific tool on your rig that you like to use, please feel free to add it to the kit. Just try not to junk up the box too much. The one thing that I would recommend you don't put in these kits is your K-Tool set. And we talked about that speed damage continuum and although this is a through the lock tool and not a full bore forcible entry tool, we are still going to damage the lock and potentially the door as well. So so this is one of those tools that we need to be able to access fast and use fast and get into that building as quickly as possible. This is a little bit more slow and considered. So again, recommend don't put this in the box. Keep this where you can grab it coming off the rig. If you think we overlooked anything, please let me know. We do budgets once a year and we can put in a budget request for one of something for every kit in the city and uh, we'll keep building it and improving it as we go along. We'll have some links to some training videos and manufacturers websites in the Target Solutions assignment that you guys can look through. And if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with me. Thanks for watching.